Hello, my name's Michael and welcome to this week's Bolsover TV. Let's take a look at what's coming up on this week's programme. A Bolsover business is bidding to become the IAAF car distributor of the year. A tip shelf woman celebrated her 100th birthday last week. South Normanton and Bolsover start their Christmas celebrations. And an author from Tip Shelf has published her new book in aid of the COVID-19 Bereaved Families for Justice Group. But first, as the cost of living crisis continues to take its grip on the country, the council are reporting a significant increase in demand for council properties. Up to 70 bids are regularly being made on available two and three bed properties. And with over 1,700 people currently registered on the waiting list, the demand is far outstretching availability. Another complication is the increase of Section 21 eviction notices being handed out by private landlords. Better known as no-fault evictions, Section 21 of the Housing Act 1988 allows landlords to turf out tenants at short notice without establishing any fault on their part. The Council is reporting that approximately 65% of all homelessness applicants are as a result of these notices. We spoke to the council leader Steve Fritchley and CEO Karen Hansen about the problem. We've got tremendous pressure on, on housing in Bolsover District. Every time uh, an house is available there might be 60, 70, 80 people uh, bidding for it. It's exacerbated by uh, housing, a rough sleeping act and all this sort of pressure from government. Uh, the fact that uh, legislation is uh, forcing a lot of private landlords to, to give people 21, uh, Section 21 notices. That's additional pressure. Uh, it's a nightmare, really. We've got a bit of a perfect storm of issues going on. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, we've got uh, over 1,700 people currently on our, on our waiting list for properties. We've got numerous issues as well that crop up, um, particularly um, in relation to post-COVID, uh, where landlords were unable to evict people for a, a quite a lengthy period of time. There's now been an influx of Section 21 eviction notices that the leaders just referred to. Um, in addition to that, there's various other um, schemes that we are currently working um, on. There's the refugee programmes, the Ukrainian um, Homes for Ukraine scheme um, and the Afghan settlement scheme as well. So there's a lots and lots of pressures on our housing programme currently. I've had numerous complaints uh, from private tenants saying I've been given a Section 21 notice uh, and then in the same breath uh, landlords put rent up. So, you know, there's all sorts of strange activities taking place. But at the end of the day, the only way we're going to relieve this pressure is to build more houses. And, uh, you know, this is what Bolsover District Council has been doing for a few years now. Uh, we've got uh, one or two uh, schemes uh, in, in process. Uh, we've been hindered recently by the uh, contractor um, uh, deciding to call it today, so we've took it over. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we're doing all we can. We're having to be flexible, we're having to move uh, pretty quick uh, to, uh, to get some of these things in place. We would ask anyone that's currently experiencing any problems with regard to the cost of living or with the size of their property to get in touch. And also if they're threatened with any kind of eviction or homelessness, let us know as soon as possible. The earlier we can sort um, and help people out, the, the better the interventions can be and the more assistance we can give. Now, a business in Bolsover is bidding to become the IAAF car distributor of the year. Auto Supplies, based on Bolsover Business Park, is one of the area's leading motor factor supplying quality parts, refinishing products and equipment. Dave Clark set up the company in 1990 with just two people and one van. But as the business grew, expansion was needed and they moved to Bolsover in 2003. And now they employ over 100 staff with 60 vehicles and receive around 3,000 deliveries every day. I spoke to Dave and asked him what winning the award would mean to the company. That award nomination, it's Car Distributor of the Year, and it's from the IAAF. So we're down to the last eight. Um, altogether, there's probably 20,000 motor factors in this country. It basically reflects the work that we do, I would say based around um, customer satisfaction, you know, how we look after as customers, how we run a business in general, and as standing within our trade. I take pride in what I do, and I like to think that we've got a really good motor factor business here, 
Um, we've won quite a few awards over the years, which is good recognition. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud and pleased, yeah. <laughs> what would it mean to win it? Uh, Self-esteem. I think it would be good for morale for staff and uh, generally good in the local trade as well. Christmas festivals are being staged up and down the district, including ones at South Normanton and Bolsover. South Normanton held its Christmas Vintage Fair on Friday the 25th of November, as hundreds of people enjoyed festive goodies, children's rides, choir, farmyard animals, Santa's Grotto, and plenty of entertainment too. Thousands of people packed into Bolsover Town Centre on Saturday the 26th of November as the popular Bolsover Christmas Festival and Lantern Parade was held. There were stalls and festival entertainment on offer throughout the day, which led up to the grand finale, which saw thousands of people parade through the town with their lanterns. On November the 25th, Doris Godston from Tibshelf celebrated her 100th birthday. Doris has lived in the village for most of her life and has a son, daughter, grandson and two great-grandchildren. On the morning of her big day, Doris was presented with a bouquet of flowers and gifts from her neighbours who gathered outside to sing happy birthday and she received a card from King Charles too. Happy belated birthday to Doris. Langworth Art Club have set up a display in the council's main headquarters in Clown. The pictures, created by members of the group, include landscape, animals, floral and portraits and have been drawn or painted using a variety of different techniques. The club meets at Langworth Bassid Village Hall and are taught by local artist Ken Brown. And finally, the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic are still ongoing and many people are grieving loved ones lost to the virus. One such woman from Tibshelf has decided to sell her children's book to help raise money for the COVID-19 bereaved families for Justice Group. The book is called Grandad Frank and James and is a collection of 12 stories, one for each month of the year. In each story, James shares an exciting day with his granddad. We spoke to the author, Catherine Salt, to find out what inspired her to write the book. I wrote the book during the pandemic. The book's based on my father and also my nephew. So it's called Grandad Frank and James. And it's a lovely little magical story that talks about each month and nice little things you can do without technology and without hardly any money. And so the story travels from January all the way through December. One of the, the chapters, they're making a snowman. So, you know, Grandad Frank's showing James how to make a snowman and how he can do that effectively with like a carrot for the nose, etc., and finding things. Showing him in another month how to fly a kite and actually making a kite so it's cost effective and it's environmentally friendly. Taking him little walks and showing him nature trails and showing him flowers and different birds. So there's a lot of really interesting things, environmental things, things that you can do without any funds, cooking, etc. So lovely little magical stories each month. 
Well, it was during the pandemic. Mm. A lot of people had started going back to basics like cooking, etc. Um, people were, were grounded, so they had to start re-evaluating their life. People were educating the children. And then I just thought, you know, my dad used to, to tell our James so much and lovely little stories, and he would educate him. And so I thought this would be the perfect book. Well, that certainly looks like an interesting and enjoyable read. So if you're struggling to know what to buy family and friends this Christmas, I'm sure the book would make a lovely present. Sadly, that's all we've got time for this week. But please join me next week on Bolsover TV when we will have loads more stories from across the district. But for now, goodbye.